Working different investigations for different type of people mean you've got to generate different types of reports based on your client. In this week's episode of Feature Focus, we focus on how to create a report of all items indexed in your case. Welcome to this week's episode of Feature Focus. How's it going this week? I'm Justin Tolman, the Director of Training over North America here at Xtero. And like I said, this week we are going to look at creating a report of all indexed items in your case. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so what we wanna do is make a report of all files that have been indexed in the case. Now, a couple things, if the court asks for this, uh, just realize the larger your data set, the longer this will take, just because you may be generating a lot of files. So if you have 16 terabytes worth of documents, just realize that exporting that much data into a report is going to take some time. But courts get what they ask for, so let's jump into it. First off, what we need to set up is a couple things. We want to set up a custom column set to display the information that you want. So to do that, you're going to click on the grid icon here in the file list pane, and that's going to open up the manage column settings window. I've already got one created called indexed files, but what you would do is you would click on new and from the available columns, you would create your column set. So what I've done with the indexed files column set that I've created is I've created a column set that indicates whether or not a file has been indexed with the indexed attribute the item number, in case you wanna track this stuff later, name, path, the size of the file, and the Mac times. It can be any set of columns that you want. We have a lot of different things here, uh, whatever you need. You could add owner information, for example, if you wanted that by going to File System Features, NTFS, if you're uh, in NTFS, and you have owner name and owner SID, and to add those, you could just move them over move it up to where you want it to be. Let's say uh, we'll put it up after that and click OK. And we'll select it, indexed files, and we'll apply it to get our owner name. Now, some of this stuff that we see up at the top doesn't have an owner name because they're system files or extracted files or whatever. But that's how you create a column set. So that'd be the first thing I would do. To get your files displayed in the file list pane, which is what you need to do, you need to quick pick your evidence. Now, if you have a large data set, say 16 terabytes, I would not quick pick all 16 terabytes at the same time. This will take a long time to load and it will just generate a file that is horrendously long. So I would quick pick my first evidence item, it would populate the item list below and do what we're gonna do. We'll cover that in a second and then deselect it and then select the next evidence item, do what we're gonna do here in a second and rinse and repeat. That'll be a lot more efficient. For this though, I do not have 16 terabytes. I only have about 100 gigabytes. So we'll go ahead and select all my stuff. Now, by quick picking, it's gonna load it all into the file list pane. And notice down here, this is a new feature in the 7.x versions of FTK, where it's only going to load the first million items. This is for speed in the interface. Usually you're not gonna load in a million items in normal investigation. You wanna filter that down using filters and different things. But in this case where we wanna build a report of all the index files, you may. What you need to remember to do is go ahead and click this little green button. And what that's going to do is load up everything that you've selected. So notice it went from a million to just over 2 million files when we told it to load it. So that's some of the setup, a column set, quick pick it, and then make sure that if you have over 1 million items, which it will indicate down here in red, click that little green button to load the rest of your items. Once you have the items that you want, loaded into the file list pane, you can right click to get our menu here and we're going to export our file list info. Click on that, select where you want it to go, select the output. Typically we do comma separated value because this is table data and CSV imports into table data really well, but you do you. In this case, we'll call it uh, conspiracy main because that's our case name we'll not do a space in the name csv and what we're going to do is all listed okay and it will tell you this selection contains over two million items or whatever you have selected of course 
The column set here below is indexed files. That's what we had here. You can change it from here and it will not change this. So if you wanted to do something else, you could. And we will go ahead and click save. This is going to go through. You can see the progress moving here. The more files that you have, the longer this will take, but it's going to spit that out. Realize a CSV file with 2 million, 3 million, 4 million files is a hefty CSV file. Five minutes later. All right, once it finishes, you can go ahead and click close. Typically when you index your case, every file is going to be indexed. However, if you've added things in various stages and didn't rerun the indexer, it is possible that you will have files that are not indexed. If you want to omit those files, or if you just want to run a check to see how many files were not indexed, you can come up to filter and click new. And in the properties pane, you can hit the drop down, come to more, all features and come down to indexed, select indexed. The operator is set to true. You can see here in the column, it's either a true or false. The operator will limit you to that as well. Click live preview to load up the data. And again, it will only load 1 million at a time. However, you can see how many was filtered out of how many total files you have. And you can see that that's the same, indicating that all of our files have been scanned by the indexer. So that's how you would set up a basic filter. You do not have to save it if you don't want. However, you could if you're going to use this on a regular basis. We'll go ahead and click close to drop that filter off. So we'll minimize FTK. We have our conspiracy main CSV file. If we right click on properties, we see that this is a 306 megabyte CSV file. So that was about 2 million items. So do the math as it goes larger than that, you can get quite a large file. Again, why you should do this on a per evidence basis to keep these file sizes down. Okay, we'll close that and we'll try to open it. Once the file opens, you can look through it. You can save it out as an XLSX or a proper Excel file. You can do formatting. Again, realize with any formatting you try to apply to this, you have multiple millions of items. So it could take a long time for Excel to update. But now that it's out into uh, CSV, we'll just go ahead and click uh, home, save as, and we'll go to browse and we'll just drop it back on the desktop as a proper Excel document of file uh, conspiracy main. We'll just name it the same thing without the extension there and hit save. So once you've saved it out as a proper Excel sheet, the deliverable can be sent to the court and they can do whatever they want with it. If they have files they want you to focus on or report on or filter on, they have the item number. They can give you a list of item numbers and you can load those back in to FTK as a filter and target your investigation on the files that they want. All right, thanks for watching.